fallout tonight from that volatile fire spewing black smoke all over the North Valley. Yeah, a company that makes batteries for electric cars caught fire. The lithium creating a huge problem for fire crews, but there's more. From yesterday near Central and Deer Valley, huge flames and smoke pouring into the sky. Firefighters had to team up with hazmat crews before rushing into this burning building. That's because this company, Gruber Motor, makes electric car batteries and they're full of lithium. People had to evacuate as crews battled those flames. So this is the remains of a T0 car. This is arguably the first Tesla Roadster. In um, the 90s, they built three of these cars, they being uh, AC propulsion systems in San Dimas, California, with a, a federal grant to produce a electric sports car. This is a hand-built car, um, way ahead of its time. And um, in order to propel the car, since it was 100% electric, they put batteries into the doors. You can see the remnants of the, uh, of the mounting structure. They had a total of 28 Johnson Controls Optima spiral wound lead acid batteries in this car. And um, the, um, there were 12 each in the doors here on each side and four underneath the power electronics module. And those batteries were not really accessible. It was very difficult to do a battery change in this car because of those four buried underneath the power electronics module, which sat right about here. The power electronics module was the inverter that converted all of that DC energy to AC to propel a three-phase AC induction motor coupled to a transaxle. The reason I say this car was way ahead of its time, prior to that electric vehicles were usually golf carts or a hundred years ago the Baker, which um, also used wet cells, lead acid cells, but none of them had the range this car did, which was about 80 miles. It also had battery management um, electronics and regenerative braking. But the really cool part was this was V to G, vehicle to grid. So essentially, if you had a solar system in your home, you could use your car for DC storage. It was a bi-directional path. This car burnt in a fire, a building fire that we had in May 5th of 2017. And this is what's left of the car. There were only three of these built and in 2017 when the fire occurred this was the only functioning T0 on the planet at that time we used to take it to car shows and uh, parade it in uh, various events it was short-lived the fire occurred about uh, four or five months after we acquired the car um, in the interior they had Recaro racing seats and um, high-efficiency tires and wheels. Um, here's another interesting side note. In the back here, you'll see this trailer hitch. This wasn't intended to pull a boat or a camper. The purpose of this trailer hitch was to provide a coupling to a Yamaha generator, which provided power when you ran out of battery juice. Now remember, that this was the days before charging stations being everywhere. So in order to go long distances with this car, you either had to find a plug somewhere and wait, or they had a trailer with this generator behind it that actually powered the DC drive or the AC drivetrain. It was uh, really humorous because on one hand this car had zero emissions, but when the batteries went low, you had a uh, small engine generator being towed behind it that was spewing all kinds of hydrocarbons. So the reason for a purchase of an unusual one of three cars like this for us was we repair Tesla Roadsters and other Tesla vehicles 
and uh, it was purchased for uh, reverse engineering purposes to uh, figure out what the analog drivetrain in here, how it functioned, and uh, to help us uh, repair uh, Tesla vehicles. The uh, Tesla Roadster, although similar size, started off being analog technology like this T0. In fact, um, a T0 was uh, commissioned by Martin Eberhardt, one of the three, and converted to lithium ion batteries, what they called at that time laptop batteries. The range now jumped up to 300 miles versus the 80 miles, and at that point, Martin and his partner Mark Tarpening realized that they had a marketable product here. They asked AC Propulsion Systems, are you going to mass produce this car? And they said, no, we're not, we're an R&D lab. We're not a car company. So he asked them whether they would mind if he continued to create these cars. Instead of building them by hand like they did here, the two partners at the time in Tesla, by this time Elon had not joined yet, went to Lotus and asked them to provide them what they call gliders or shells. They selected the Lotus Elise, which was a small car like this, and had them shipped to California and then electrified the drivetrain. Initially, they were using the same technology that was in the T0, the inverter, um, the, uh, the battery management system, and what they found was because of the analog design, it was unstable and unreliable. Tesla at the time decided to go with a digital technology and completely revamped and redesigned the drivetrain, all the electronics, and um, created what today is known as a power electronics module in a Tesla Roadster. They found that to be far more reliable than the older analog technology. This car was actually um, kind of interesting. There was some logic in the dash that was uh, kept alive by a nine volt battery. And the previous owner warned me, he said, when you change that battery, and you should do that every year because there's some software that runs on those chips and we may not be able to restore. So make sure that you provide nine volts to that circuit board while you're changing the battery so you don't lose your memory. I'm used to driving a Tesla Roadster. At the time I, uh, this car was functional, I had a 2011 Lightning Green. It was my daily driver. So I was able to do a pretty good comparison between the T0 and the Roadster. And um, honestly, the performance of this was equal to that, uh, to that Roadster, zero to 60 in under four seconds. What I really liked about this car was the variable or adjustable regenerative braking. Um, in, the, um, in the Tesla vehicles, the later Tesla vehicles, that is not adjustable. In this car, you could crank it down so far that when you let your foot off of the accelerator, the car really starts to slow down or not if you turn it the other direction. So the frame was handcrafted to accommodate a fiberglass body made by Piantec. And um, it, was a, it was painted bright yellow and the rest was basically all custom. So the, the fire that this was involved in started with a Tesla Roadster repair that we were doing with a battery pack that went uh, nuclear on us. And um, the Phoenix Fire Department showed up one afternoon around five o'clock after the fire had started to try to quench the flames and uh, realized that they had no idea how to fight a lithium ion fire. So after trying foam, CO2, um, they finally gave up and they said, uh, we have no idea how to fight this. We're just going to back away and let this thing torch until it's done. So we stood out on the street there on Central Avenue for about three hours or so, just watching 11 cars go up in flames. Sadly enough, there were seven Tesla Roadsters in that building, and of course a T0, a race car, and some other uh, cool vehicles. But you can see the amount of heat that was generated in that building. This is an aluminum transaxle, and you can see portions of it are actually melted. The steel, of course, survived because it has a higher melting point than the stainless steel. Um, and then there are other um, pieces of aluminum 
like in the brake systems that were um, affected. One of the wheels was melted. So the intensity of this fire was uh, pretty severe. So thank you for watching this video and subscribing to our channel. Our goal is to provide interesting historical information about the evolution of this transportation shift into electric vehicles. And this is truly one of the early museum pieces that uh, helped create this revolution.